Okay, hi. Yeah, it's me. Um, Matt. <laughs> well, that's a good intro. Um, full disclosure, I have played this game before, like, probably hundreds of times by this point. To the point where I can speedrun it in, like, an hour if I really try to. But I wanted to do a proper series of this game because I tend to do a lot better talking about my thoughts when I'm just, like, actually playing through the game and the game itself tells me what I want to say about it than I do trying to make an actual, like, review video of it like I did for Amnesia the Bunker. And I plan to play through the entire Amnesia series, including Amnesia the Bunker, doing this. But I also want to real quickly disclose that I am not going to be overreacting or screeching and yelling like you see, like you used to see a bunch of YouTubers do back in the day with this game. Because, you know what? I don't really even care. I'm just doing this for fun, so... <laughs> Here we go. Yes, start a new game. And also, if you're wondering why my audio, my mic quality is terrible right now, it's because my... Hang on. Don't forget. Some things mustn't be forgotten. The shadow hunting me. I must hurry. My name is Daniel. I live in London at... at... Uh, Mayfair. What have I done? This is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... Is... I am Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Anyway, like I was saying, um... I'm using my headset's mic right now because my Yeti, for some reason, during like the last video I recorded, which I think was the Amnesia the Bunker review video, decided to completely quit out on me. And now it just like, it works still technically, but it has a very bad tendency to break randomly without warning and just stop recording. And I just can't allow that. And I'm actually going to out of paranoia real quickly check make sure my thing is still recording it is okay all right here we go but anyway this is amnesia the dark descent and if you are at all into horror games you probably already know at least know of this game because this game was kind of infamous back in the 20 early 2010s because um it Pretty much was at the time considered the scariest game that had ever been released and it kicked off i guess you could say a horror game like a renaissance in the horror game community and led to the development of a bunch of other games that did stuff stuff similar and even expanded on the formula such as like outlast which i also at some point want to play on this channel oh by the way i'm also just gonna start going back doing let's plays again because <laughs> I miss doing that. I'm not going to be doing devlog videos anymore because... Uh, I... Same reason as why I'm doing this instead of making a review video. I do better writing my thoughts when it comes to things like that than... Speaking them, so... And I speak my thoughts better when I have something to do while I'm out, while I'm talking, such as actually playing the game. But yeah, what I was... Why I mentioned the audio thing is because I was going to ask if anyone who's watching this has a suggestion for a good microphone I could look into buying as a replacement for my Blue Yeti, then please just leave it, like, as a link or tell me about it in the comments if you can. Like, I'm not, I'm not an audiophile. I don't know anything about audio. I'm just a man who appreciates good sound design. And speaking of good sound design, the sound design in this game and every single game Frictional Games has ever released, for that matter, is absolutely stellar. I'm actually going to be quiet a little bit here so you can hear some of that, if I can. I'm, I'm not good at that either, by the way. I have, like, the worst of all worlds. Like, I am terrible at not talking, but I'm also terrible at talking. <laughs> Actually, gonna turn that up a little bit, and also the reason the volume here, my master volume here is shoot, 
so low is because the volume in this game scales very strangely. Like, at full, it's incredibly loud. At three, like it is right now, it's average. And at zero, it's mute. And speaking, and I, I kind of underst I kind of can understand how that can be a ca the case with this game. Because I just had to deal with that for the settings menu in Henson Hopper a few days ago. And my goodness, let me just say, converting from decibels to, like, a... Normalized percentage volume slider is. I actually forgot about that. <laughs> is a freaking nightmare. Like, it's because, um, and I actually discovered this in my experimenting with that feature. Okay, Daniel. I get it. I get it. You're you're terrified because you're imagining things happening that probably happened in real life to you at some point. Uh, but I discovered this whenever I was trying to get the audio to work with, the, or, the, or the volume slider to work with the settings menu in Hanson Hopper, which I haven't really just talked about on this channel. You can, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can check out some of the posts I made on Game Jolt about it. But when I was trying to when I was trying to figure out how to do the volume slider, I learned that the conversion between decibels and just like a one zero to one value is inverse logarithmic. In other words, well, not inverse logarithmic; it's negative logarithmic. So, because minus eighty decibels is silence, and that's also zero. So it's basically um take the inverse log. Of the percentage of the um, value between zero and one, one being full volume and zero being mute. So you take the negative log of that, multiply it by 20, and you get a normalized scaled volume from zero to negative 80 decibels. Or technically, you have to cap the end of the slider to 0 0.0001 because log zero is undefined. I, I'm, I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. I should really be talking about the game, huh? I just went through that whole section without even mentioning what, any of it at all. <laughs> the door slammed shut behind him, and he knew he would never again see the old tailor at Berkeley Square. Another lone soul in London seemed appropriate somehow, I think is what that said. I didn't get to finish that because I started late. Okay. I'm going to focus here. Um, God, I forgot how creepy this game is. Um, I absolutely love Amnesia, by the way. Like, this game especially, like, well, I mean, I like Amnesia the Bunker better, but ugh, this game still holds a special place in my heart because it was one of the first horror games, like, one of the first proper horror games I ever played was Amnesia the Dark Descent. Hello. And something I've been wanting to comment on somewhere for a long time, and part of the reason I'm even making this video is the aesthetic of the Amnesia series is absolutely genius for a horror game because everything from the sound design to just the way the lighting is and how it interacts with the objects is surreal and almost dreamlike in such an uncomfortable way. There's my lantern that I know and love. But the reason that is very clever for a horror game is because it really feels like a nightmare. Like the game itself feels it, like it feels aesthetically like a nightmare. And that is absolutely brilliant. Oh. Why is it doing this? Are you kidding me? Does it need to be doing this right now? It does this sometimes. I don't know if there's a way I can fix that without restarting the game. So, um, I might need to pause the recording and restart my game here.
So, hold on. Okay, exiting to the main menu and then pressing play again. Fixed it. We're fine. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but... You really... This game is kind of buggy. Like... What button is it? Right bumper. Okay. Like, it breaks easily. This game breaks very easily. And that's probably just because it's a very old game, and Frictional made this on a very tight schedule. Should I... Wait a minute. That for my, should I turn on development developer commentary for this game? I have played through this game with developer commentary on, which probably will not surprise most of you if you're watching this knowing just how interested I am in game development. Like, just look at, look at the lighting engine in this game. It's just so good. I, just, I love it. I love things like this. I don't know why. Like, I, I can't help it, okay? It's just who I am. 19th of August, 1839. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. Okay, so that... I'm recording? Yes? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still new with it. I'm still getting used to this again. Um... So that sets up the whole premise of this game. We are Daniel, we are in Brandenburg Castle, and we need to find and murder Alexander. For some reason. Or for reasons that will be made... Excuse me? Who the heck do you think you are? Defy me? You, you defy me? Bah! Well, we're gonna go. <laughs> huh. He fell to the kitchen floor. Tears were beginning to well in his eyes as he received the first kick in his, st in his stomach. Hazel remained hidden in fear she too would be punished. Okay, so Daniel's dad or somebody in his family was an abusive piece of shit. Is basically what that's saying. Um. Yeah, I don't support that. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking, come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... what did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenberg. I posted about this on threads this morning, but I'm- that reminds me, because this is about the point in the game where I was playing, like, early this morning, where I actually thought about this and posted that, but I am very impressed with how well this game holds up visually, like, even today. Considering that this game was released in 2010, especially, this game holds up really well, visually speaking, but there are a couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of. For one thing, the- Emission maps on these windows are just a little bit bright and also like Yeah, that up there is a little bit too bright and the effect the effect for the flashback is a little bit too bright for me But I don't know those three might just be like my sensory processing Hijacking my opinions on things. I don't know, but that might not be a problem for neurotypical people So I'm gonna Yeah, that's a whatever thing. I, I'm picky 
I'll just leave it at that. It is tough and pliant. It cannot be torn by hand or tools. Why the frick would you touch that? I don't understand you, Daniel. But, <laughs> so, yeah, we need to go to the, if that, if that flashback didn't make it clear, we need to go to the refinery to get to the Inner Sanctum, and it is blocked by some sort of organic tissue that we need to get rid of, and should I try and pretend I don't know how to, no, I'm not going to pretend I don't know how to solve that puzzle, I do, because I already admitted at the start that I've played this before many times. Like, I know where everything is. Because of how many times I've played through this. We'll say... What the heck? What the... What am I... What am I... What was I raising up on? What? You see that? Like, I, like when I go near that bookshelf, I, like, I like rise up, like, a, a, a cup, like, half a foot. Um... What? <laughs> Why is that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Blah. Anyway. Um. Oh, hey, more goop. Blocking my exit. You love to see it. Um. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, what was I doing? Yeah, we need to get to the refinery. We need to get to the refinery, which is blocked by goop. And in order to get rid of that goop, I think we're gonna... Ha I'm gonna just operate under the notion that I am Daniel. And I'm gonna go, oh, I think we need to... <laughs> I think? What the... I don't know. I do not know what dialect that was. If you're, if you're about to ask. I think I made it up, to be completely honest. But yeah, we need to go to the we need to go to the laboratory. I'm, I'm not gonna try and bullshit it. The other children cheered him on. His name voiced in a steadily rising pace, urging him to do it. Am I really doing this? The young boy thought and struck his victim with a rock. So Daniel's done some things in his childhood that he's not proud of. I'm guessing. Ugh. Anyone notice that when I lit this this lamp this torch right here, the entire room got a little bit brighter and orange lit? That is a really nice attention to detail. I like that a lot. I don't like that that is breathing. I'm kind of surprised, considering, like, I have played through this game many times, that it's actually unnerving me. Something is wrong. Oh, so wrong. Story of my life, Daniel. There's always something wrong. It's either work stressing me out, or there's a programming problem I'm struggling to solve, or... Something. There's always something. Don't we know? Don't we all know it? Q. Picard. Is that how you pronounce that? Hair. Whatever it's called. The the water guy that I hate. That we will see probably in the next video. Okay, chemical relocation. The lack of a chimney to properly vent the fumes from my most recent experiments has taken its toll on many of my less stable ingredients in storage. Some seem ineffective, but many are stained by the fumes and will be difficult to salvage. I shall do what I can and move them to the wine cellar. Alright. So, if, if you didn't get that, that's basically saying that there are chemicals in the wine cellar that we could probably use. And we need to go there next. So there should be more Kubrak. Let me see, let me see. And one part Aqua Fortis. I was reading through the Steam reviews for this game one day and 
I came across the nitpickiest nitpick I think I've ever seen in my life about, like, Cuprite. And that was saying that this game uses Cuprite and that this game is set in 1839 and Cuprite wasn't called that until 1845. This is my third attempt to produce artificial vitae. And I now know how to pronounce that because I've played Amnesia Rebirth. The former compounds lack the potency I need, but I sense I'm close. Calamine and Orbiment are a given, and the Cuprite binds them well. This time I will attempt Aqua Regia instead of Aqua Fortis, and hope it will produce a more even solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. That's the experiment he was talking about up in the first paragraph, by the way. The solution is highly acid, and proves impractical to put to any use except as a detergent. Organic tissue reacts especially violently to, to the solution, and it should be handled with the greatest care. I might be able to use the recipe, but I am losing hope that I will find an alchemic solution to my predicament. Oh yeah, this is set back when alchemy was a thing. That's right. Um, evidence in the laboratory has revealed that combining four chemicals can create a powerful acid. So, what this is setting up is that we need to go to the wine cellar to get four chemicals to make an acid to dissolve the organic tissue in the refinery. Or in the hallway leading to the refinery. And here comes bright light. One day I will return. If it wasn't for the thought of you, my love, I wouldn't be able to go on. When I find myself doing terrible things, I take comfort in you. As long as I am able to think of you and long for a life together, I know I am better than the others. I weep for them. They lust for power without restraint, where I only crave fair judgment and a safe return. Oh, how do I get out of that without jumping? Did I un- I unmuted my mic, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I keep muting my mic during the flashbacks because I often take, like, a drink of water whenever dialogue is playing because I try and stay quiet for that. And I just don't want the sound of me drinking water from my water bottle to come through on the video. I don't want to do that to whoever's watching me. You know, if that makes any sense. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm just like alt tabby out of the game to see if my recording is doing okay. And I think it is, but we'll, we'll see whenever I exit. Fragrant taste of rose lingered in his mouth. Turkish delights, he thought, just like the ones at the consulate in Constantinople. <laughs> Actually, made me jump. Wow, we need to go to the wine cellar to get those chemicals. But unfortunately, it is Tithlokida. Which is not words, but screw you. How about those words? I make up words all the time. I don't care. Yeah, we need to get the key to the wine cellar and... God only knows where that is. Well, I know where that is, but... I'm trying not to spoil it, even though you're watching this and have probably played the game before. Unless you're some people who only watch people play horror games. Like, it could, like I, I get that this is an old engine, but, like, this is just a little bit excessively bright, in my opinion. And I think Amnesia Machine for Pigs actually tones it down. And I appreciate the updates to the HPL engine in that game for that. Because it's... It's a small thing. It's not it's not something I can't handle, but like it still bugs me, you know what I mean? We need to go to the, the archives because that's where we're going to find the key. Traveling to Dover meant going through Canterbury. He made sure to pay a visit to avoid the sense of guilt connected with neglect of family. Oh boy. Rare books. Someone left this in a star in a sorry state, didn't they? I don't know why I'm checking these. I don't think I literally like I literally never find anything in those. Even in custom stories. 
an underutilized asset in this game. 16th of May, 1839. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. So, Tin Hanan, also known as Tahana, is the main antagonist of Amnesia Rebirth. Whoops. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Daniel was an archaeologist who was on a expedition in Algiers. That's that's the takeaway from that note. And that took place... Which button was it? Y. Okay. That took place... Um. This is set, This note was 19th of August, 1839, and the diary here was 16th of May, so this took place three months, I think almost to the day, before what's happening right now as I play in the game, which is really interesting. I'm gonna just light this. I came to habit of lighting everything I see where it is dark from Amnesia Rebirth as well. Wilhelm's contract. I hereby offer my full attention and services to Alexander, Baron of Brennenburg. This contract will reign for a total of three years when my freedom shall return to me. In addition, Alexander, Baron of Brennenburg, is to recommend my services at the Prussian Royal Court and within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break this seal. Wilhelm, House of Garrick. Okay, so... Someone named Wilhelm is involved in all of this somewhere. And I know who that is. And we will actually learn of their fate in a little bit here. Catalogs. Studium. Light this. Light that. Save my oil. I'll need it later. <laughs> I like how I just every time I walk into a room in this game, I just like I just like throw things. <laughs> it's just like make a mess. It's a habit I've always had in amnesia games, but it's not really a habit in other games. Not that not that most. Ugh. Ugh. Not that many video games I've played really have a full, like, interactive physics system involved like this game does. Like, that's something that's fairly unique to Frictional's games, honestly. And I kind of love that about them. Hello. Excuse me? You know that thing was down, right? Nah, it's a ghost. They don't care about the physical world. No, I probably shouldn't waste every one of my tinder boxes here, but... I feel a compulsory need to light everything I see right now. Wasn't there something in this room? Yeah, there was. Okay. I, I, I forgot. I, for, I almost forgot it. Okay. And we, we're good on oil for now. Um. Yet. Hello, brute. I don't like you. Even though you don't become a threat until 
very much later. The Brute is still, like, one of the scariest monsters in any horror game. 17th of May, 1839. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. That was part two of three of that. I'm just checking to make sure I... Yeah, I did, okay. That was part two or three of that. Um, Daniel and the rest of the expedition, including Herbert, went into a, an underground tomb they found in Algiers. And Daniel got trapped inside after he and some of the rest of the people on the expedition dug their way in. I don't know why I'm like summarizing. It won't open its. It won't open its locked. Door leading to the local history room is locked. Is there another entrance? Historia loci. <laughs> Historia loci. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny to me. Screw you. Huh. So yeah, I actually a lot of things about this game kind of kind of started to make a little bit more sense after I played Amnesia Rebirth, and I'll probably point a few of those out as I continue with the game here. But for now, I don't think any of them particularly matter. So I'm gonna try to just shut up about it for a little bit. I don't actually think there's even a single instance in this entire game where I find something useful in one of these. Why is that? Have you ever, has anyone who's played this game, like, ever noticed how even in custom stories you, like, never find anything even remotely useful in these? Like, why? What, what is wrong with them that you don't put anything in them? Much of the castle is old and hasn't been tended to for centuries. When the shadow arrives, it won't take long until things start falling apart. We're just buying time anyway. Let's do what we can. There isn't much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Okay, so Daniel and Alexander knew that this shadow was coming for them, and they went to... I don't know, why do I keep trying, why do I keep summarizing those? Like... You again, really? You again? Piano... Goofus? That's what I thought. How dare you? Practice your pianoisms in my in my castle. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, then. Yeah. Thanks. I bet it was the piano goofus caused that collapse. My age old enemy. Age old enemy. The ghost pianist. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Why'd you eat the note? 17th of May, 1839. After pounding the unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. Okay, then. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. The mystic light. That sound is really cool. I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away, unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. And eye-burning whiteness. Thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted, the voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety, and grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. You know, one missed opportunity in that whole sequence was the opportunity that they could have had to, like, I guess, showcase in a way some of the things Daniel described there, like the spiraling towers, the quote-unquote spiraling towers, endless deserts, and an impossible geometry. Like, I think it would have been really cool if they had included, like, some, like, flashes of... Or not really flashes, because that would have overstimulated me a little bit, but... Like, fade-ins of maybe, like, sketches Daniel may or may not have drawn of some of the things he saw. And especially if those were some things I would recognize from the other world in Amnesia Rebirth. I'm spoiling things left and right here. I need to find something to break this. Um... You. Head. Why don't you go head in here? Yeah. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel. You can never be too careful, Daniel. Alexander's voice actor is did a really good job, by the way. Daniel's as well, but I, I kind of like Alexander's voice in this game a little bit, a lot better than Daniel's. Like, I, I, that's not, not anything critical toward either of the voice actors or anything like that. It's just personal preference. Okay, this note here is really interesting because it... It starts what is probably like my favorite recurring element of the uh, oops, of the Amnesia series as a franchise is the fact that there are almost in like pretty much every game there is at some point some kind of story or poem of some type that either alludes to or directly refers to the monsters and what's really going on. And in this game, that is this note. Altstadt and Brandenburg Castle, 1801. Another region rich with lore is Altstadt. I'm going to point these out in the future games as well, by the way, when I play through them. Deep within the East Prussian woods, for centuries there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbor, Castle Brandenburg. 
The quiet forest-clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes are as picturesque as can be, albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Checking to make sure my thing's still recording. Hang on. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations as it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motifs that keep re motifs, not motifs, I pronounced that wrong for a lot of my life, that keep reappearing. The Gatherers. <laughs> this story reaches all the way back to the time of the Thirty Years' War. It is said that soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold dark woods and were forever damned to roam the grounds. Their bodies, wrought by their tainted souls, have left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have cited them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers as they seem to follow some ambition to steal living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap sacks dragged, <laughs> dragged behind them which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? <laughs> Just, okay, I'm gonna stop. Oh, brother. <laughs> a visit undone. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, who was a real person, by the way. Some people who've played this game don't know that. The well-known erudite visited Allstadt at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for remnants of Kingdom's past. His... During his stay, all prominent members of society paid notice, and he is mentioned in many records of the time. One day, he went to investigate a burrow in the northwestern glades, only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Allstadt, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who was this mysterious man who visited the sleepy, ha sleepy hamlet in the woods, and what happened to him? The Immortal Baron the Baron of Brennenberg lives a reclusive life with his family at his castle nearby Alstadt, and like most of those of noble birth, rumors are inherited alongside the title. Researching his the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. Oh, that reminds me actually, um, Brennenberg itself, I think, means burning house. So it's interesting that the castle is called Brennenberg when it was at some point consumed by a fire. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands. That's not where he was really from, and nor is that his actual name. But that's a discussion for Amnesia Rebirth. <laughs> Claiming the role of prote as protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region flourish and remained popular throughout his re presumed lifetime. Oh, his presumed lifetime. You mean his 300-year lifetime that he has sustained by torturing people? I'm s uh, sorry. Spoiler alert, again. The family has always been secretive when it comes to lineage and heritage. Therefore, the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully recorded. This has fed the idea that the Baron is, in fact, one and the same who came from the West over 300 years ago. Indeed, he is lived through the time of occupation and joined the coveted Order of the Black Eagle, along with the great leaders of this country. Uh-huh. Was that... Did I read every page of that? I think I did. That was... There was only three stories. Yeah, I read, read everything. I read it. I read it all. We're good. Oh, yeah. That's that door. Um... So what we need to do here is actually pull these three books, but... Where is it? That one. Yeah, okay. We need to pull these three books, but I think I'm gonna wait and do that next time I record, because I work very early mornings currently, and it is, like, after 4 p.m. for me, and since I go to work now at 1.20, um, I'm... It's bedtime <laughs> for me, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna go to sleep now. Um... This was fun. I, I'm kind of glad I decided to do this. I'm definitely gonna edit this tomorrow and probably upload it tomorrow as well. But I mean, edit it. I'm just gonna add like a fade in and a fade out. But yeah, I'm I'm glad I decided to do this. This is actually fun, and I'm not gonna be taking this 
all that seriously moving forward. I'm just going to be, like, recording for however long I feel like it and just, like, you know, just letting go, having fun with it, you know? I think that was my mistake that led to my YouTube burnout there for a little while was taking it all too seriously. And that's a... I, I'm not going to go on for too much longer. I'll, I'll, I'll save this for another video. Um, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!